So how was uh, working on this special? I saw you in Vegas. I saw you. I know you did. It was very funny, man. Thank you. Buddy. Very funny. I, I, I really enjoyed it. I appreciate it, man. I I, I had uh, had a great time making the special. I had a great. I have a great time on the road. I can't believe it. You know, I fucking quit doing stand up for you know like twenty years or something. What made you want to get back? Uh, I think I was doing grown ups and uh, rock and spade and. Schneider and KJ were always talking about uh, next weekend I'm going to Niagara Falls and I'd be like, these guys are all fucking having fun on the road and and I and I and then I think Apatow was doing a Carnegie Hall he was hosting something and he said, you want to uh, do some stand up again and I just go, yeah yeah let me do that and I I did it just to make sure that I fucking put together 15 minutes or something that got me back into it and did you just piece it together by doing small sets or did you how did you write i was i was i i think maybe i did a couple of improvs or something that that, uh, maybe maybe i went to the improv a couple times but mostly from doing letterman i used to do letterman and do two segments so i'd fucking sit down with my buddies write jokes and just go out there with jokes and kind of trusted that yeah that's a good joke and i think i started doing that with stand-up too just going ah this is pretty good let me just do it and then like when did you start booking gigs I did the same shit i called the guy is this this great guy whose daughter was going to school with mine he would talk about booking acts and shit i said I'm, i was thinking of doing stand-up again you want to book me some shows and then he just booked like a 10 city tour for me and I said all right I better fucking put an hour together for that. Wow. So how did you what how did you put the hour together? Did you go to the improv? Did you improv, go to the store? Where'd you go? A couple times at the store, improv, uh I would drive out of town, you know, the valley, uh maybe an like hour the ha ha that kind of shit. Yes, yeah. yes. A- anybody flappers. My, my, exactly, flappers. Flappers good spots. Good to spot. Try shit out. Yeah. Um yeah, I just did a bunch of Maybe I went down to the Comedy and Magic Club. Is that still right? Yeah, yes, I did. I for did. For sure. Yes, yes, yes. Beach, that's a great club. Uh, good, yes, exactly. I, except I remember growing up, I would always see Leno and uh, Joe. Uh, what, what, what is it? Joe? Not, not. Is it Brogan? What was it? What was Jimmy Brogan? Jimmy Brogan. Yeah, the booker. Yeah, the book. But he did, did clean, stand up as he well. He did stand up and they were so clean and they would fucking annihilate. And I always felt self-conscious in that place for how filthy I was. And I'd be like, these people don't want to see this. Well, the Comedy Magic Club is like the cleanest club in the country. That right, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, Jimmy Miller used to book it. Did I, he? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Apatow used to always go there. Yeah, it's a. that's a great little club. That's a good club. So I forced myself to get a good album. Now I got, I mean, when I, when I was on the road the last tour, I was, I have so many... You know, I have so much shit that steps on other shit, so I can't really do it all. Right. Because if I already said this, so that this joke doesn't make any sense now. So, but I was fucking doing two hour shows, and it wasn't that big of a deal. Wow. Can you believe that? Yeah. Because I, mean, I, I remember struggling to do an hour of my whole stand up life. I'd be like, my God, how fucking. The crowd's so bored with me now. I can't come <laughs> up with new moves, you know? But now, got enough shit. Keep them rocking. So how long have you been steady doing stand-up again now? I think like seven years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It must feel good, though, right? It's nice, To man. get back into like a real flow, like a real headliner 100%, flow again. 100%, yes. And go, oh, yeah, I missed this. I did miss it. I didn't even it's know I missed it. It's the most fun. Absolutely. You, you, you fucking were loose. That was, you set yourself up to, to do a live fucking special. I don't think I could handle that, man. My head be spinning way too much, man. But, but you, I had to over-prepare. You yeah yeah you but you you didn't have you didn't have any pauses you just boom 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 you did how long were you doing that set? Uh, well, I did. Well, you know because I have my own club that helps a lot, right? So mm-hmm. I was doing two shows a night, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I was doing six hours of stand up yeah. a week, uh-huh. which is a lot. Yeah yeah yeah. And then I was doing podcasts and all the other UFC stuff that I do. It's a lot of work. Right. That got to be too much. So then I knocked it down to three sets a week. 
three headliner sets a week, and uh-huh. then I would do a bunch of short sets. You know, oh, yeah, like yeah, bo- yeah. that bottom of the barrel show that I told you that yeah. my friend Brian Simpson hosts. That yeah. show's the best. Yeah, it's it's like a premise factory. Yeah, because you have this whiskey barrel on stage. It's filled with notes from the crowd. Yeah. It's all just different ridiculous ideas for premises, and you reach your hand in, you yeah. pull one out, and it's just you know frogs are gay, right. like whatever right. it is, and you just start ranting right. about, right. and you try to come up with bits, and, you and know, you land every on now and good then, shit. one you, know, you get one or two every set 